So as they say that it all starts from an idea. So Danny posted his idea in 2019 that he's struggling with making uh, basically DML and callouts together. His situation was basically he wants a validation rule pre-check before uh, committing to DML and before making a call out. And uh, he uh, correctly quoted that database dot rollback, it's considered as a DML as well. So you cannot get out of this uh, circle when you are stuck into it. And finally, I will get more into it. I will, but I think you should read the language. He is uh, very, a little bit funny here as well. He said that don't uh, preach about my approach being bad and all that. He wants a solution and gladly Salesforce listened to him. So this idea was delivered here in the spring 24. You can read out in release notes. And I will cover a bit about that. So let's move to my slides next. So this is again about mixing DMLs and web service callouts. So this is the notorious error, which you all must have seen that you have an uncommitted work pending. Please commit or roll back before uh, calling out. Okay, so we have all seen that. Why does this happen? This happens because callouts are typically not allowed in an uncommitted transaction. Or callout uh, cannot happen when a DML is there within the same transaction. And in Apex, like in Java and other languages, we don't have commit control. We can't force commit in Apex. That is the catch here. So let's keep moving. But before that, we're talking about DMLs and I uh, thought it's an interesting thing to cover. So I want all of you to take a look and consider your pre Spring 24 release in an org with API version 59 as of now. So these are simple statements. We are creating save point. We're trying to insert an account and we are doing database roll, rollback. So now I want you to think uh, between uh, uh, yourself only, there is nobody else, and think how many DML rows and statements are there, one, two, and three. Just take a second, pause this video. So the answer here is three. Some of you must have guessed two or one or something else, but the answer is three. After you execute uh, this piece of code, these three lines, and if you check the debug logs, the limit usage says that the number of DML statements is three and number of DML rows is three. So what this means is this means all of these are DML statements and all of them are DML rows. So now if we come back to Mr. Danny, so that's why he's saying that the database.rollback save point constitutes a DML. So there is no coming out. You cannot... Uh, roll back a DML with a DML itself. So you are still in a DML context. So now when this is clear, let's keep moving ahead. So now let's take a simple scenario. We are creating an account from maybe a standard Salesforce UI or a custom LWC. User enters a detail, clicks the save button, and he triggers validation rules of flows to ensure business integrity, integrity sorry, and find duplicates. They are fired and they validate all the other business compliance rules. If there are no duplicates, or no other business validation failures, it will roll back the transaction. Why we are doing that? Because we want to make sure that before we call out web service and send this account data, our account is having a good quality data, which is at least uh, uh, insertable into Salesforce database. It is not having any integrity validation and those kind of issues. And now uh, you might ask that why we can uh, not do it after doing call out, because at times call outs are not uh, in the same transaction context. We cannot roll back a call out after the data is created on a remote server. So that's why this validation is done. Rollback is done because we want to first make a call out, make sure that this goes well, and then take an external ID from the call out and update back the same account record with the account ID or the external ID, which is coming back from the remote system. This is a common scenario. You all must have done that call a web service, take an external ID and create a record with that external ID. It is as simple as that. Only thing is we're trying to do a validation here. So let's move ahead. Okay. This piece of code is showing the same thing. You have a safe point created. You're trying to insert an account that will fire all sort of validation rules, triggers flows, which are doing business integrity and validation checks. Now you're rolling back the transaction because if it is coming here, that means that uh, the account is healthy, having good data. It is creatable in the Salesforce database. We're making a call out here. Now what happens is, as this rollback is a DML, this never works, and we see the same that uncommitted work pending kind of error, and we can never reach back till this stage. So this is the issue which Spring 24 release is trying to fix, and this is the line where the issue happens. 
Let's move ahead. So it's a deadlock of a site because we have insert, update, delete, and delete merge. They are all DML. Rollback is also a DML. And interestingly, set save point and release save point, et cetera, are all DMLs. Let's move ahead. So in Spring 24 release, they have this uh, release save point stuff. And what it uh, says it uh, that you do a rollback and then release save points, and then you go ahead with callout, it will proceed. So rather than uh, talking, let me show how it works. So this is the same stuff. This is the same stuff. Only new line here is database.release save point. So this makes sure that the transaction is rolled back and the save point is released. And now this piece of code works. So the interesting stuff is not here. This is all good. This is nice now. We can do these kind of validations, roll back the transaction, insert, and then do another transaction. Now, the interesting part here is that callout without releasing a save point. Uh, these are some corner conditions which are quoted by Salesforce. Like if you create a save point, you do this kind of callout, even this is not allowed. These are the corner conditions. So in this case, you will run into this kind of error that the, all the save points must be released. So even if you are just created a save point, it's a DML, so it is not allowed just for your knowledge. And even if you, let's say, create a save point, you release the save point, but you don't roll back the transaction, that also doesn't work, you again get the same thing. So the, this whole thing is a combination. You have to do a rollback and you have to do release save point to kill the whole transactional context and make sure that there is no issue with the callout after that. Going ahead, uh, yeah. So now let's visit the same three lines again, simple code, right? Now let's see what happens when you are in a Spring 24 org now. The same piece of code will check the limit usage. So now if we come here, we will see that in pre-Spring 24, there are three DML statements, three rows. In post-Spring 24, DML statements are three, but DML rows are one, right? So DML statements, each of them are still DML statements, but there is a single DML row. Okay, this is interesting. And uh, now what probably Salesforce has done, they are not counting database methods like set save point, roll back and release save point as a DML uh, row. They are only counting as a DML statement. Probably this is an internal fix they did. For me, all DML statements are a DML only, but probably they have a, a way to patch this limitation. But uh, this is how I understood it. So that's why I, uh, I'm summarizing it here by saying that it's a rollback and release save point combination to do a pre call out DML validation scenario. This is primarily for those kind of use cases. If you have more insights into these kind of catchy situations, how Salesforce came around this thing, some internal interesting database uh, facts about how this thing is working, I would love to hear back in comments. And if you want to learn more, you can find everything in Salesforce Spring 24 release notes and the Apex developer guide. This is a classic refresher for our old school guys. Like we typically change the context using uh, async methods like future. If we have to mix database changes and call out, not in pre-validation scenario, but in another scenario, or we can split the transaction into Ajax processes if we are mixing DML and callouts. Like those who know VS, uh, Visual Force, this is the way we can do in like one save button flow, we do the save logic where we create the database record and on completion of it, then we call the web service. So this is again not related to this thing. This is just a refresher here. And that's all. Thank you.